That was in May of 1968. We had worked so hard. I was so nervous because I really thought we were going to get it. When I saw the M, I thought, oh my goodness, we got it, Montreal. But that night I began to sense, uh-oh, maybe this isn't going to work. And then we tried to buy the White Sox a year later, thought we had them bought. Now, whether the league would have approved is another story. And stunningly, on Labor Day of 69, it came to an end. I'm reading the oh, Sentinel, and it's talking about Seattle Club, and the Seattle Club's got trouble. It was amazing. And of course, three, four, four days later, Ed Fitzgerald, one of my partners who traveled with me all the time, was president of Cutler Hammer in those days. I called him that day, and I didn't know how to tell him this. I said, Ed, um, the White Sox deal's dead, and I could, oh. Uh, I could hear that, and I, and I don't blame them. We had spent endless hours. But I said, you and I are going to Seattle Friday. No, I'm not going to Seattle. I said, Ed, we gotta go. And he did go, and we did go. And that started six, eight months of battle because Bowie Q wanted to keep him there. Gee. And um, painful, but we were getting nowhere. But fortunately, they couldn't find an owner. And in March, Joe Cronin called me one day, never forget it. First call from a baseball person in five and a half years, so I knew we were ready. And he slugged, he called everybody slug because he couldn't remember anybody's name. But anyway, he said, um, are you guys still ready? I said, uh, tomorrow morning. And one thing led to another, and then on March 31st, I mean, it was an amazing story.